And what do you think um, of the prospects uh, for Barack Obama um, dealing with, with this? How do you think he's going to approach it? Well, I, I think it's too soon to tell, say whether he's going to be successful or not. But I think one of the tragic ironies is that, you know, he came in with a, a really interesting, large-scale, very different conception of how things could be, and he finds himself plunged into the middle of the deepest economic crisis, which is obviously absorbing all his energies and the energies of his team and so on. So it is a tragedy that the, he's been struck amidships by this within weeks of coming into power. And nevertheless, I don't think that sums up the, you know, what I feel about the Obama phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I, I want to divide the Obama phenomenon into two. The first is the huge historic shift which he represents, bringing a black person into the White House, you know, what that means in terms of America's historic race relations, also getting America to vote for change, even if though it's, there's not a very specific notion of what that change should be, getting America to vote for a, a different kind of way of behaving overseas. He's a huge transformation and that he should have been successful in putting that across, in getting young people to invest in it. Uh, I think that's a huge historic achievement. And I think that's already done, even if he's completely unsuccessful after that. That's done and finished, wrapped up, and we'll have to reckon on the consequences of that historically. And then what can he do now he's in power? I think we uh, have expected too much of him. Uh, you know, he's one individual. He's not a, uh, um, you know, he's not a magician. He can't conjure things out of nowhere. Uh, people on the left imagine that you know Obama is going to bring socialism back to America. He's never been a person of the left of that kind. He never pretended to be. He doesn't come out of that tradition. He comes out of a civil rights, you know, black struggle, redistribution of uh, America's enormous wealth. That's the tradition. He, you have to measure him in those terms. I mean, if he were to bring some of the millions of people in America who are not, who have no health insurance at all, if that's if all that he did by the end of his first term, I think that was a historic achievement. So I think of Obama, you know, an individual trying to change a system. This is the strongest uh, nation in the world, a massive global power. I imagined him in his first week meeting the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the CIA, <laughs> the Federal Reserve, you know, these entrenched, huge entrenched interests with enormous economic resources behind them, you know. And Obama is trying to say, I think we ought to go in a different direction, guys. You know, it's a huge thing that he's trying to do. I don't think that he, we need to excuse him for that. I think we ought to be critical. I think he's going to make a mess of the Israeli-Palestinian thing. I don't think he, he knows how difficult that one is. I think he's being very ambivalent about, about uh, Afghanistan, trying to win and get out at one and the same time. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of things like that that I think we will be disappointed by, partly because our expectations will be too high. Yeah, not a realistic sense of what it's like to change a global world power, which is what he's tried to do. Mm -hmm. And on a personal level, I mean, many people thought they'd never see a, a black U.S. president in their lifetime. Were you a among them? Were you um, very cautious before? And what were you? What did you actually feel? Well, I thought I'd never see it in my lifetime, but that may not mean that it wouldn't happen quite quickly. You know, if you think of uh, Jesse Jackson, yeah, it was already, you know, quite a break, you know. It's a serious candidacy by a black American. Of course, he didn't get very far, but I thought against the background of civil rights and what has been going on around that and in its aftermath in the period since, there will be some serious black people who will get quite far in politics. You know, you think of Washington and Chicago, you think of the black mayors. It's been part of a long-running thing. Not to say that it's not a big achievement, huge achievement, but it is, and it's a very important marker, but it's not inconceivable. It's sort of inconceivable in Britain, but it's not inconceivable, I think, in the US. So I wasn't uh, surprised by that. But what I think was is important about it in one way. I'd just been reading his book, book about his father. And I think of what was said at the time, he may have said it himself, you know, uh, um, 
I'm not just a black politician, meaning I'm not just appealing to the black constituency. And of course he comes from this very mixed background, African, you know, lived in Hawaii, Indonesia, a Muslim name, you know. And when I read the book, I understand that, though he's not in a classic sense a black African-American, he spent all his time trying to discover who he was. I mean, he went to Chicago to find out who he was. So he's a black politician, and because of what he symbolizes, not because of the color of his skin or the history, it's because he's learned kind of, to speak on behalf of a tradition to the rest of America. And it's that moment of translation from the values of something which he's learned himself into a wider world which doesn't see itself as, as uh, racially defined, which is, you know, I think is the moment that he symbolizes. And I don't know that I thought I would see that. Mm.